Today we're going to help you save some cash by fixing up an old mountain bike. Now many people will have one laying around the place, whether that's stashed up in the loft, at the back of the garage, covered in all sorts of other junk, in the garden shed, or even just laying around in the garden, lent up against the wall, gathering dust. Now this is a perfect opportunity to do something great with the bike. Perhaps you know someone that's in need of a bike. You could fix it up and you could donate it to them. Perhaps you could turn it into a new town bike, a rat bike, or your new daily commuter bike, saving wear and tear on your favorite weekend bike. Alternatively, you could do it up, sell it, make a bit of cash, and turn that cash into something nice and shiny for your regular mountain bike. Now, if you're used to fixing bikes, this is a great refresher on some of the old tech that your current bike might not have. Alternatively, if you're new to GMBN Tech, this is the perfect video to get to know mountain bikes and start working on them. Okay, so let's have a little look at the bike I'm going to be working on today. This is a Marin Shoreline Trail. Dates back to 2001, this one. Um, I think it was around 800 quid at the time when you could buy them. So by all accounts, pretty good bike uh, if you take into inflation uh, what it would be today. Uh, full suspension, four inches of travel, front and rear. It's got eight gears on the back, three on the front. Um, that's about all you need to know. It's in a terrible state, but this bike actually is well worth spending time. This could be a great bike for someone. It could be a first bike for someone. It could be a bike for a younger or a smaller rider. It's a really good option here and well worth spending the time on, but hopefully we won't need to spend any cash on it, and if at all, a minimal amount. Now, Blake used this for a presenter video where he spent 100 quid to buy the thing, so he got it for a bit of a bargain, and um, as a result, we absolutely trashed it. It's been at the back of the GMBN lockup, which is where we found it, uh, amongst other terrible condition bikes. But I thought this one was a really good candidate. Uh, and the reason for that is it's got a bit of history. So Marin bikes in the UK, I mean, they're, they're massive everywhere, but in the UK, they had a real cool story. So in 1996, they had a cross country version of the same frame layout as this called the Mount Vision. And a guy called Paul Lazenby, uh, if you're watching this, Paul, Hi, I know you watch the channel. Uh, absolute legend, he, he became the first elite racer to win a major title on a full suspension bike in a cross country race. And he won the national championships on one. Everyone else was on hard tails and some of them were on rigid bikes because full suspension just hadn't been proven in, in that realm yet. Everyone saw it as a hindrance and a weight penalty, not as a benefit to going faster. So he really sort of opened that up for everyone and really put Marin out there on, on a sort of, uh, well, put them out there in the limelight. I think it's really cool. And this kind of nods back to that. So I think it's definitely worth doing the bike up. So let's have a little closer look at it, shall we? Right, so let's have a little closer look at it. Right, so it's obviously filthy. We're gonna to need to give it a bit of a clean. Uh, rear tire is flat as anything. So I'm guessing it's got pinch puncture. Rear brake blocks, they don't even touch the rim. Um, always a little bit of a concern. Um, we may need to replace the brake blocks, but luckily they're dirt cheap. And you're talking like probably four or five quid for a set of brake blocks like that. Uh, that rear derailleur is all over the place. Uh, I don't know if you can see that down there. That has had a hell of a whack at some point. Yeah, that's not even straight. So we'll bend that back. Um, something that's quite handy about older bikes. So this one's got eight speeds on the rear and three on the front. The fewer gears the bike has, the easier it is to get them working again because of the fact it's not so precise as the really cool 12, 11, 10 speed stuff we have today. That stuff has to be perfectly aligned. This stuff, far less so, so a lot easier to actually fix up. Okay, so moving on to the front of the bike here. Let's have a look at the handlebars. So, oh, that's a little, little bit sticky. I don't know if you can see that, it wants to stick. So we will take, uh, we'll take the cable out and we'll give that a good bit of lube. Um, shifter. Little bit sticky, we can make that work a bit better. Uh, the other brake lever, yeah, all the way to the bar, so we'll need to sort the cables out on that. Um, obviously give that a safety check up at the front here as well. Front tire doesn't look too bad. A um, little bit perished though. So something with tires, the longer a bike has been in storage, the more likely it is that you're gonna need to replace the tires. But luckily, being 26 inch, you can get bargains on them. Um, I reckon I could pick up some tires for less than 20 quid for a pair, um, so, Hopefully, that's really all we need to spend. Perhaps brake pads and perhaps tyres. Um, but that's it. Let's give it a bit of a clean, shall we? And then we can actually see for sure. Okay, so I'm using some proper bike cleaner on here. You might not have access to that. You might just have a simple bucket and a brush. That will do to get a bike clean, although you really can't beat this stuff. Um, I've also got the luxury of having a jet wash, so I'm gonna get this hammered out quick. 
Okay, so normally at this stage, I'd be telling you to give the bike a bit of a wipe down because you really want to clean, protect, and then lube it. Protecting, of course, means using a corrosion inhibitor to drive out the moisture so you don't get any rust. This bike has already got a bit of surface rust on the chain. However, given the fact we're doing a bunch of other things to the bike, I'm going to take it inside, let it drip dry, and have a cup of tea while it dries off. Right, okay, so the bike, as you can see, is looking a bit cleaner. Now, before I get started on it, it's important to have a sort of method. However, you're gonna work on any bike, I'm gonna work front to back on this one. Now, when I was inspecting the tires on it, as I was washing the bike, I did notice that there is a bit of a slash in the sidewall of the front tire. Um, I inflated them and they're both still kind of up, so I think it might just be a slow puncture. So I'm gonna take my chances with that, but I am gonna swap the tires out. Now, I could order some, but I do have some tires that won't go with this very well up in the loft, uh, intended for another bike. So I'm gonna actually chuck them on here for argument's sake for the time being. So first port of call is to check out this headset that sounds a little bit notchy, but it's not too bad. I suspect it's just got barely any grease left in it or any grease in there is a bit manky. So super quick and easy to do that. And then the front end feel nice. And then we're gonna get the wheels out, swap those tires over. Then I'm gonna check out that front brake and make sure it's nice and safe and it works like it should do. You want to start by taking the top cap off um, or at least loosening it then you loosen those stem clamp bolts once they're loose the top cap is the only thing that's going to stop the stem coming off so make sure you hold on to the fork release that top cap wiggle that stem off and let it just dangle carefully and then hopefully you should be able to slide the fork out now because i want to slide that fork out you're going to need to disconnect the front brake you could take the cable off the brake but actually because these are old cable brakes you'll find there's a little slot in the barrel adjuster here and if I just slide the cable out the side of the bars there, you'll find that you can actually disconnect it at the lever. There we go. So that is that cable away. Now, like this bike that's been around for, well, since 2001, I suspect this has never been done on here. Um, you might even need to tap the steerer tube just to get it out and free it from the system. And as you can see, it's pretty gunky in here. So if you're gonna remove any parts on a bike to clean them, put them down ideally on a workbench or a working top, and you want some sort of shop towel or some kitchen roll, something like that, so don't roll anywhere, and you can just use that to clean them with at the same time. Again, it's always nice to use some proper cleaning products. You know, I'm lucky enough that I've got everything here at my disposal, but you might not have. So you can use some, basically just a bit of elbow grease. If it's really mucky, you can use things like household cleaners and stuff, but to be honest, you want to kind of steer clear of that stuff if you can. Better off just using a bit of elbow grease, get that stuff nice and clean. Okay, so I've just given the headset bearings a bit of a clean down. The good thing about these is they're not cartridge bearings, so you're gonna find bearings similar to these on a lot of old bikes, which means they're really easy to clean, provided they're not too worn out. These are actually in excellent condition. They just needed all of the sort of crap flushing out of them. Uh, you can see by the state of the rag here, some of the color of stuff that's come off them. So these will be great. I'll just let the isopropyl alcohol on that disc brake cleaner dry out completely before I think about putting them back in. In the meantime, I'm just gonna give the frame cups a wipe down and put some fresh grease in, then this headset back together, and that's that bit done. Now, something I probably should have said is when you're cleaning out these cups, just give them a little feel with the ends of your fingers. No, I'm using gloves because these are really gunky. Uh, you don't have to. Um, if you're old school and a bit of a mechanic, use some barrier cream on your hands before you do this. Uh, that way you just make sure the grease doesn't soak into your skin and it means they're gonna be easier to clean afterwards. Yeah, look for a nice smooth bearing surface if you're using traditional bearings like the ones I am here because you want them to spin nice and freely around here. If those bearings have been worn or the bearing surfaces get pitted, that's when it's time for a new headset. And then you're gonna to have to re reassess whether it's worth it on that bike. There's no substitute for having a good quality grease though for your bike. Now there's lots of different greases available to put in different parts of the bike, but a good general purpose grease that is carbon safe is a really sensible thing for you to have in your own workshop. Okay, pretty simplistic here, just sliding the steerer tube back in place. I'm gonna make sure I wipe off the excess grease afterwards, and I might actually use a bit of isopropyl alcohol or disc brake cleaner on a rag, just to make sure there's no residue on the frame and on the, the outer cups of the headset there, because that's where dirt and grime will stick afterwards. Uh, just a little tip for you there. Uh, put it back together before I clamp the steerer tube up with that stem. I'm just going to adjust the top cap there until the headset feels like it's running smoothly but there's no play in it. And you can clamp it up and then you're good to go. And this is what I've got for um, 
That's just actually from a wife's bike, but not any longer, apparently. Uh, rapid Rob with a uh, little white sidewall, so they look pretty awful to be fair, but um, they're cheap. Hey, I think these are about 16 quid for the pair. Um, I got them ages ago, I think off like Wiggle or something like that. But uh, yeah, right, so these will do to get this functioning. Let's get them on. Okay, so the fork is back in the bike. I've changed the tire on at least the front wheel for now. Um, time to put the front wheel back in. Now, before we set the brakes up, we just wanna have a look at the front wheel. And in fact, I actually should have done this just now. Um, just have a feel of the axle. See how it feels. Does it feel smooth? Does it feel rough? This one actually feels really smooth and it has got massive rubber seals. So it looks like an old Shimano parallax hub. Um, it's unnamed, so I don't know what it is. If, that's, if it is a parallax hub, they're pretty much fit and forget forever, but yours might not feel like it. Um, if that's the case, you may want to remove the axle to uh, give it a bit of TLC, but this one is fine, so I'm not going to interrupt it. Let's just get the wheel back in. I want to make sure that the, uh, the spokes are in good condition, and then we can have a little safety check on the rim. Now, bearing in mind, this bike doesn't have disc brakes on it, so a lot of older bikes will not have disc brakes on it. And you're using the rim, basically, as your braking surface. Now, this is something really important. So bearing in mind that this is a structural part of the bike. This is a part of the wheel. You're also wearing it out by braking on it. So if the bike is extremely old, if you run your thumbnail, you will actually be able to feel if the rim is pitted. Um, if it's heavily pitted, then you might want to consider if you want to continue using that wheel. This one's just got some minor scoring on it. I think it's absolutely fine. But in extreme cases, it's known that the sidewalls of the rims actually can break. Um, they can actually break as well as when you're braking on them because they're so old and perished. So just be mindful of the condition of the sidewalls. Okay, so um, I'm just going to run find the, uh, the valve, which is here. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a spoke check. I'm just looking for anything extremely or extraordinarily loose or tight. Um, so far, not too bad. Now, if there's anything that is literally hanging apart loose and you're not someone that knows about truing wheels, you can still nip that up, but don't go too tight. Nip it up tight and then maybe another half a turn and then hopefully that won't affect things. The secret with trim wheels is to do little, not to do too much. Because as well as being able to pull the, the rim over to each side using tightness on them, you'll actually pull the rim up and down as well. So it's important if you've got a spoke that's particularly tight, but you need the rim to move that way, you need to consider tightening on the other side and loosening that one to counter that. So there's a bit of back and forth with doing that. But if that's something you're not comfortable with, don't worry about it. As long as your wheels are loosely round, you're fine. The whole point of this is to get the bike rideable, not to make sure it's perfect. So I'm happy with those and I'm going to reconnect that front brake and then we're going to do a bit of work on the brake. Right, so the brake's pulling quite far to the bars. So, and actually it felt a bit stiff though. It didn't feel too bad now. I might put a bit of lube through the brake lever there just to make sure it runs a bit smoother. And then I'm going to be looking at these brake pads. Now the front ones, I noticed they're not in the worst condition, they're okay, but the rear ones are caught a glimpse in them earlier. They look horrendous, so we're gonna change those rear brake pads. I have somewhere in one of these some old, they're not quite the same. Yeah, here we go. They're a bit smaller, so if you look at them side by side, they're a little bit smaller, but they've got the same fitting, so we can make these work. That's no problem at all. Uh, they're just cheap old brake pads. Um, if you do need to buy brake pads for brakes like this, for a complete set, you'd be looking under 10 quid, um, probably five quid if you look around. Now you'll see they've got conical washers on the pads. That is so you can actually manipulate the pad back and forth, up and down and at an angle. As a thing called toe-in. Toe-in is what you wanna have on both your front and rear brake pads, whether you have V-brakes or cantilever brakes, it's the same principle. And the idea is the front of the brake pad is hits the rim very fractionally before the rear does and as the rotation of the rim goes around, the brake is pulled onto the rim. This, in theory, helps them stop squeaking. Squeaking brakes come from brake pads vibrating. And if they hit rear first or they hit flat, as they get pulled, they can go and the oscillation turns into horrendous squeaking. So nine times out of 10, that's what causes squeaky brakes. So get them towed in. Note that when I pull the brake lever here, once the brake pads are aligned, you can see that one of the brake arms is moving more than the other, and the wheel is central in the fork, so there's no problem with that. Now, they both have independent springs, and as you can see, they've got little adjuster screws here. Now, these are different on all V-brakes, but essentially, they work exactly the same. On the posh ones, you might have Allen keys. These ones are just screw heads. They're quite crude, but they do the job absolutely fine. Now, 
just like adjusting spokes, don't think that you've just constantly got to tighten one up to have an effect. Sometimes it's better to loosen the opposite one than it is to tighten the one that's the culprit. Just sit back and think about it first. If it's already extremely tight, then there's a problem. You might want to back it off and then adjust the other one. Okay, just a quick sidetrack here. I've um, I put the tyre on the back wheel. It's all clean, ready to go. Um, I've just noticed that the hub is a little bit grungy. Now, this isn't something that you absolutely have to do. The idea is we're getting a bike out of the shed, fixing it up, good to ride. This is fine to ride. There's no plane, it does move, but I'm a sucker for details. So I'm actually gonna whip this out, put a bit of fresh grease in here, just so I know that whatever we do with this bike, it's good to go. Now, if you wanna do that at home, you might need a few specialist tools, so this could slow you down a bit. You'll need to remove the cassette in order to do that. So you need a chain whip and a cassette tool. If you haven't got one, you can't really get the cassette off. Uh, also, you might need some cone spanners. They're essentially like normal spanners, they're just extremely thin because you have a lock nut against the nut that basically adjusts that bearing. So, little tip for you as well. Uh, I've got some of these park tool picks. Uh, you get, they're heavily magnetic on the end. They're super good for getting out the bearings from the hub, but you can use electrical screwdrivers for that same purpose. It's got like some gunky stuff in it, so I'm just gonna replace that with some fresh, nicely squeezed grease. And there we go, look. Nice and smooth, and some nice clean grease in there. Uh, gonna purge a bit more through, because when you put the axle back through, it purges any remaining old stuff out, and even um, to the excess stuff. Now this hub will be good for a long time now. Sorted. I have noticed the rear rim has got a little bit of a buckle on there. So if I just feel around the spokes, you can normally feel if there's a couple that are especially tight or especially loose, and that's normally where the culprit is. Now again, you don't need to go crazy on this. You just wanna make sure it passes through smoothly enough you don't really feel that buckle when you're braking. For anything else, and you're unsure about it, you really need to go to the bike shop to get them to true it for you. You can check our video out, but it is for slightly more competent mechanics. And that video is in the description underneath. Now, let's get those gears sorted out. Now, as you can see, that rear mech hanger is, well, it's, it's pretty bent. Right, so let's get the mech off. Uh, it's a five mil Allen key if you need to do this at home. And the best thing for straightening the mech hanger is an adjustable spanner, uh, unless you happen to have the correct tools, but you're likely to just need an adjustable spanner here. Now be very careful with this. Some of them are part of the frame, and some of them, like this one, are replaceable options that bolt to the frame. Either way, they're very easy to snap, and I don't want to do that because I don't want to spend any more money on this bike than I absolutely have to. That looks okay to me, I'm happy with that. That looks near enough straight. Now thankfully, bikes with less gears like this one, it's actually, you can have a slightly more bent setup and get away with it, and you can with the more modern 10, 11, and 12 speeds. This has only got eight on the back, so this is actually quite easy to adjust. So I'm gonna leave that, I'm not gonna chance bending it anymore. Uh, I'm gonna fit a new cable in here as well, because it's obviously had some water in the system. So let's get the handlebar grip off. Uh, it's only a little bit of a grip here, so we've got a grip shift. Let's take the grip shifter off. That's a little bit stiff, we'll put some suspension grease in there. Uh, just an important note, if you have grip shift, by the way, and you're gonna uh, put any sort of grease in them, make sure it's a grease that's friendly on plastics and rubbers. Suspension fork grease is perfect for this sort of stuff. Uh, it won't deteriorate the, the uh, grip shift on the inside. Uh, new one in, slide it back in, just check that indexing. Yep, that feels good. Now, for putting a handlebar grip back on, trust me on this one, the best thing on earth for doing that is hairspray. I would know about hairspray, wouldn't I? Yep. And that one is the best one. Uh, extreme, I think it is, or something like that. It's really powerful glue. Um, leave, slide the grip back on and leave it basically into a set. Don't be tempted to see if it's set, just leave it. As long as you can leave it and it will, it literally dries like glue. Brilliant stuff. Okay, so that's done. Cable back through, nip that up. Now, if you do need to make any adjustments to your gears, uh, just bear in mind there's only three real things you need to adjust. The limit screws, there they are, up and down. One adjusts the inner limit, one adjusts the outer limit, and then of course the cable tension. Now there's a video in the description underneath to show you all you need to know about fine tuning a rear derailleur in the description underneath this one. There's also going to be one on a front derailleur coming, so if you need to make those adjustments there's a dedicated video for that as well, so that will help you on your way. All right, I call that a job well done. That is a old battered up bike successfully rescued for not much money. Now the tires I did admittedly have lying around, but you could pick up dirt cheap old tires like this for about 10 or a piece. That's really not a lot of money. And you could probably do better than these. These ones are a little bit ropey, but they will do perfectly to get the bike working. I've also put on there two inner cables, one brake one and one gear one. And again, they're dirt cheap, they're a couple of quid each. I always keep these sort of things around. Oh, I also put some brake pads on the rear. So in, in total, if you were to spend out on that, 
probably under 25 quid, 25 euros, something like that. That is not bad for getting a bike like this rideable again. That can make a great gift for someone. You can even sell it, make a few quid. You could definitely make a good profit on that for the amounts you spent on it. It's taken me an afternoon to do this, including cleaning it. So that's not bad by all accounts. I'm pretty happy with that. And um, well, we'll see what we can do with it. Now, if there's anything else on this bike that you'd like me to go into in detail, we'll use this for a couple other videos because it's got some good old stuff on. I'm more than happy to help. So you might notice I did a bit of a rear hub service on there. Um, if you want to see a detailed video on that, because this is the old sole hub that's got cup and cone bearings. And of course, if you want to service that free hub body, you have to have the big 12 mil Allen key. If you want to see me do that, I'm happy to do that. Let us know in the description underneath. And I also think I should do a cheap suspension fork service video using something like these. We'll take them apart, give them a bit of clean, we'll make them feel really good. I mean, admittedly, they still work all right. That's quite amazing for a bike from 2001. But I bet there's some pond water in the bottom of those. So if you want to see that one, let us know. Any old stuff, let us know in those comments and we're more than happy to make that stuff. We love entertaining you guys and we love giving you the stuff to help make your bikes better. So uh, thanks for hanging around, as always.